what I'd like to talk to you now about is the um, is how to look at post run analysis. So that's here in the browser button. So if we click on the browser button, we see that there's a directory tree made up of a variety of levels. And the levels start at the level of the user. Under users, there are projects. So at the user level, if you click on a user, you have a, a bunch of buttons that, are, that open up. You can edit a user, so you can change the name of a user if you wish. At the project level, again, you can edit the project. You can change the, the, uh, the project name, and you can add descriptive information about a particular um, separation project that you're doing for protein purification. And underneath the project, this is where we have I'm just going to delete this. This is where you have um, a method, and underneath a method, you have lens information. So, just a little bit of of, um, of um, information about how to use the software to organize these file structures within projects. <coughs> you can copy or move methods as you wish. So we can move a method if we want from one project to another. So if I were to set up, for example, a new project. So I click on new project and I could type in dry tea as an example. So this is a new project. And if I decided that I actually wanted this method to move to be moved to that project, I could click on the me on the method, click move, and then click on the dry tea project, click move again, and now the method has been moved here. Everything that was attached to this method, all the runs that were attached to the method, the purification runs, also get moved because uh, the software doesn't allow you to break a run from a method because this was the method used. To, to do this particular run. By the same token, I can't move, therefore, an individual run. You can see that the move button is grayed out. I have to move at the method level. By the same token, I can't delete a method until the associated runs have been deleted. So now I can delete this run, and then I can delete the method. So let's let me show you this here under this project where I can select the project and then I can delete the project here because there's nothing attached to this project. There's no method or run underneath this project. So I can click yes and now that project's been deleted. Okay? So this is sort of how you can clean up things inside this browser menu. The other nice thing that you can do is you can actually copy your data. So you can load dual flow software on any computer. It's not license protected. So you can load it on any computer and you can go to the computer where you actually did your dual flow separation runs, the computer that's connected to the actual FPLC. And you can click on your user at the user level and you can say, I want to copy out information from this user. So you click copy out and it's going to create a dot ZIB file. I can then add, change the name of this ZIB file if I wish. I typically just leave it like this because I'm going to copy it out and I'm going to copy it back in. But I can copy it out to any drive, including a, a USB key drive if I wished. For now, I'll just leave it on the C drive. Click OK. So it's asking me, do I want to do I want to copy out the file? I've already created a biologic.zip file, so I'm just going to say yes. We'll replace it. And now I can copy it back in. So I can create a new user, for example. Call this Sean One. And now I can copy in this file which contains dry tea, and I can select everything, or I can just select the method itself that's connected to a run, the project, and I can say copy in, and saying copy in selected, 
Yeah. And now it's copied in the entire project under the users. Okay? So it's copied Sean XT. Here. So now I have two Sean XTs basically. Okay? And if I wanted to move this method for as an example, move this into this project, click move again, and now that's copied in. And I could delete this information if I wished. And there we go. So now I've copied out and copied in the uh, the particular project here into Sean 1. So this is sort of how you use the browser to be able to look and to, to organize your files and copy them out and copy them back in. Now for looking at a, an actual run, I click on the, the user, the project, the method, and then I can examine the run. So I can double click on the run, and now I have the run information here. So this is the actual chromatogram from this run. I can add tags to the chromatogram, but before I start about these tags, what you can do when you've opened a run is you can actually look at the log files. You can see what's been done in this run. So all the details of what's happened during this run are all described in detail in the log file. You can also add notes. If you wish to add some notes to the run, you can add notes about what exactly was done, how things worked, the experiment that was done. I can also change the settings on the graph if I wish. So I can change what I'm looking at on the, uh, in terms of UV conductivity percent of buffer B. I can change the y-axis, so the the, uh, the scale, and I can change the scale of the x-axis here in terms of minutes. Alright? I can also look at the full view of the graph, or if I zoom in, I can zoom in on particular aspects of the graph just by clicking and dragging to zoom in on a particular aspect of the graph, or I can see the full view again. So, little options that you have to be able to look in more detail at your run and the run the associated run information. Now I can tag peak. So if I clicked on this one, when 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 you see the white arrow here, you can click and then you can delete tags if you wish. So you know I can click on tag three, delete it, flag tag two, delete that one. Tag one delete that one. Or I can add tags just by mousing to where the peak is and clicking. Two, three. So I have three tags. Is that a fourth one? Oh, now that's become one. If I click on it and I delete it, it renumbers from one to three. If I want to actually have descriptive information about those peaks, I can go into the tags tab, the tags button. I can actually rename those peaks. Sean, do one, mule three. And I can say show user tag names instead of the sequential tag number. And now I can see my user tags. If I want to export this information, uh, by the way, you can control the axes information here. So you can increase or decrease the scales of your axes, and, and uh, then I can print the information, sorry, I can print the chromatograms, I can also copy the chromatogram to clipboard and paste it somewhere if I wish, I can even export the data. So if I wanted to export the data and put it into Excel, I can export the UV and conductivity data. I recommend only using one point per second to limit the number of records that you're going to create in Excel because that's a lot of records. <coughs> and then you can export the data. And then open it in Excel and create the chromatogram in Excel if you wish. The other thing that you can do, so that's basically the post-run information here that you can look at. Oh, by the way, these numbers here are fractions. So this peak is an example. The peak labeled Sean is in fraction 16. The peak labeled Bear 1 is in fraction 20, as an example. Okay? So when you go to the fraction collector, you can collect those fractions. If I go back to the browser, so let me close this file. File, close. 
And if I go back to the browser, I can also do a compare. So I can compare a run with any other run. So if I, I click on the first run that I want to compare in the method, click compare, and it's going to ask you to name this you know, uh, as a run name. I can call it whatever I wish. I'll call it compare one for now. So now I have that run here, down here, under post mix. If I click here, for example, on this one, then I click compare. So there's another run. Click compare again. Now I'm comparing post mix with the ion exchange post desalting. And now I can click down here in this window, compare traces. So now I have this window to compare the traces. So I can see the two traces, and then what I can do is I can click on I can click on overlays, and I can look at the two traces overlaid on each other. I can shift them up or down if I wish, so I can see them easier. I can decide what I want to see in terms of visibility on the x-axis and y-axis, and I can also if I want, I can go into Select, and I can look at Options. So instead of looking at the UV, maybe I want to look at how the conductivity went on those two runs. So these are the conductivity traces that are overlaid, as an example. And I can print any of this information, or export, copy the overlay image to Clipboard, or export the overlay image. So I can put that into, into uh, a, soft, a software like uh, PowerPoint or Word or whatever. So these are the things that you can do with the software to examine your run data. Um, it's a powerful software tool and, and uh, definitely uh, one worth, worth having to uh, on your own computer to be able to export your own data from the Dualflow into uh, your copy of Dualflow software to be able to analyze your results. I hope this was interesting.